This week during science, we're going to be learning about weathering. Be sure to watch the YouTube video that's linked in Google Classroom before you read along with me. We're going to turn to page 6 in the textbook. The title is Weathering. You can see these different pictures of rocks that have shown signs of weathering. Let's take a closer look at the pictures. So the picture on the left shows physical weathering of cliffs. On the right, a rock weathered by freezing and thawing of water. So I guess water can affect weathering. Let's take a look at this page. Sand abrasion on cliffs. So maybe sand can cause weathering. On the right side, it says sand carried by wind can weather rocks into interesting shapes. Huh, that's an interesting thing to learn. And in this picture, it shows tree roots grow and break rocks. So I guess trees can cause weathering too. All right, let's start reading. The title says, Weathering. Pebbles and sand are pieces of rock. Pebbles are pretty big. You can count a handful of pebbles. Pieces of sand are tiny. You can't count the particles in a handful of sand. All pebbles and sand particles start out as huge masses of rock the size of mountains. How do mountains break down into pebbles and sand? Huh, so I guess they're saying that really large rocks or rocks the size of mountains eventually can break down and become really small pebbles, sand, and tiny rocks. How does that happen? Let's keep reading. The answer is weathering. Weathering is the breaking apart of rocks into smaller pieces. Weathering happens to all rocks when they are exposed to water and air. So water and air causes weathering. I know that there are two types of weathering. Let's learn about the first type. It's called physical weathering. Rocks break down in two ways. Physical weathering makes rocks smaller, but does not change the rocks in any other way. When a big rock falls from the side of a cliff, it breaks into lots of smaller rocks. All the minerals in the small rocks are the same as the minerals in the big rock. When rocks get hot and then cold, they can crack. Sometimes, water gets into cracks in rocks. Water expands when it freezes. That means it gets bigger. It can expand enough to break big sections of rock along the crack. When ice melts, the rock may break into smaller pieces. So if I have a rock and there's a crack in the rock and water gets inside the crack, if that water freezes, the water or the ice gets expands, so it gets bigger, right? And then when the water melts or the ice melts, then the rock can crack into different pieces. That's a type of weathering. Now let's read on page seven. Roots of trees and bushes can grow down into cracks in rocks. As roots grow, they make the cracks bigger. Sometimes the cracks get so big that the rock falls apart. When rocks bang into one another, they get worn down. Rubbing, grinding, and banging is called abrasion. Abrasion is a kind of physical weathering. It happens when rocks fall in landslides, tumble in flowing water, or crash around in waves. Wind can blow sand against rocks. This sand blasting weathers the rocks. 
So I guess abrasion is when things rub against rocks or rocks rub against each other and that breaks them down into smaller pieces. That's physical weathering. Now on the next page we're going to learn about chemical weathering. Hmm, let's take a look at these pictures. On the top it says chemical weathering of a rock containing iron. So this rock has iron in it. I wonder what chemical weathering means. Let's take a look at this next picture. It says chemical weathering of marble by acid rain. Marble is this type of stone, this rock. So I guess acid rain has kind of changed this rock somehow. And on the bottom left, it says chemical weathering of sandstone by salt water. We know that oceans are have salt water, right? We don't want to drink the salt water. Um, and salt water makes the sandstone, this type of rock, change so it looks very bumpy and it has lots of holes. So let's read about chemical weathering. It says chemical weathering. Chemical weathering happens when minerals in rocks are changed by chemicals in air and in water and air. The starting minerals change into new substances. So it's not the same anymore, it's different. Many rocks contain iron. When oxygen in air comes in contact with iron, the iron in the rock can rust. Rust is iron oxide. Iron oxide is softer than other iron materials. This causes the rock to break apart faster. Oh, so the iron in the rock, when it comes into contact with air, it turns into rust. Rust is that dirty red kind of brown stuff that you find on coins sometimes. Let's keep reading. Carbon dioxide gas in the air dissolves in water droplets. This makes acid. The acid droplets can fall as rain. The acid causes the calcite in limestone and marble to make holes. This is a chemical change. Monuments, buildings, and gravestones made of marble or limestone change and weaken when exposed to acid rain. So pollution causes acid rain. So the rain, it's not clean anymore, so it's acidic. So it's acid rain, and that makes the rocks have holes in them, kind of like the pictures that we were looking at. Last paragraph. Salt can cause chemical weathering. Salt water can react with minerals in rocks to make new materials. When the new substances are softer than the original min mineral, holes can form. The rock the weak rock breaks and falls apart more easily. So if you look at this picture on the right side, right, there are now holes in the marble. And same thing with this sandstone. The sandstone now has holes in it because the material is softer. Hmm, that's really interesting. So today we learned about weathering. There are two types of weathering, physical weathering and chemical weathering.